The Information Paradox Imagine a star collapsing. Its light flickers, bends, and dies as gravity pulls everything inward. Matter, energy, even space and time twisting into a single point, a black hole, a place where the laws of physics stop working, where reality falls into silence. Anything that crosses the event horizon is lost, not just physically, fundamentally. But here's the paradox. Let's say you throw a book into a black hole. That book has information words, patterns, atoms arranged just so, and once it crosses the edge, it's gone forever. But physics says information can't be destroyed, ever. According to quantum mechanics, the universe runs like a machine, a vast equation where every input leads to an output. If you knew all the pieces, you could rewind the entire universe back to the beginning. But when you drop something into a black hole, that information, the shape of a hand, the path of a photon, the detail of a memory, vanishes. And when the black hole evaporates, as hawking radiation, it releases random particles, but no trace of the book no signature, no memory. So the universe breaks its own rules. Stephen Hawking himself called this one of the greatest puzzles in physics. Does information fall in and never come out? Or does the universe lie to us? Because if information is truly lost, then quantum mechanics, our most successful theory, falls apart. But if information somehow escapes, then black holes aren't silent. They whisper, they echo, they record everything. Some physicists say the information is smeared on the event horizon, like a hologram. Others say it leaks out slowly, scrambled beyond recognition. Some even say black holes connect to other regions of space or other universes, but no one really knows. The information paradox reveals something terrifying, that we may not understand reality at the deepest level. That time, memory, and logic can burn away in the dark, and maybe the universe has a place where truth goes to die, and that is the information paradox. The Andromeda Paradox. Two people walk past each other on a sidewalk. Nothing unusual, just two strangers crossing paths. But one is walking north, the other south. Their difference in speed? Tiny, barely noticeable. But now look deeper. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, motion affects how you perceive time, not just for yourself, but for everything else in the universe, including galaxies, including Andromeda, a swirling storm of stars over 2.5 million light years away. Now here's the paradox. Even though those two people passed each other, in the same moment, their present is not the same. For the person walking north, somewhere in Andromeda, a decision might have just been made to invade Earth. For the person walking south, that decision might not happen for another day. Same place, same time, different realities. Because what counts as now depends on how you move. Your definition of the present moment reaches across the stars and shifts with a single step. That's the Andromeda Paradox, first proposed by philosopher Roger Penrose 
it shows that even the smallest motion changes what events are happening right now in distant galaxies. So while you tie your shoes, the future might already be unfolding in the arms of Andromeda, or it hasn't started yet. It depends on who you are and how fast you're walking. It sounds absurd, but it's baked into the math of space-time. The universe doesn't have a single shared now. There is no universal clock, no absolute moment, only slices of time tilted and shifting based on your perspective. And the deeper you fall into relativity, the more reality starts to feel like illusion. So next time you cross paths with someone, know this, you might both be here on the same street, but you're living in slightly different universes. And somewhere in Andromeda, your timelines may already disagree. And that is the Andromeda Paradox. The Banach Tarski Paradox. Imagine holding a solid, perfect sphere in your hands. Smooth, finite, real, a simple object in space. Now imagine this. You cut it into five pieces, not with a blade, but with pure mathematics. Then, without stretching, without adding material, you rearrange those five pieces and create two identical spheres, each the exact same size as the original. You've just doubled the bowl out of nothing. This is the Banach-Tarski paradox, a theorem so bizarre it feels like magic or madness, but it's real, mathematically proven in 1924 by Stefan Banach and Alfred Tarski. It says, a solid ball in 3D space can be split into a finite number of pieces, which can then be reassembled using only rotation and movement into two balls each the same size as the first. No stretching, no shrinking, just pure rearrangement. It violates everything your instincts know about space, volume, and matter. But it works because it doesn't happen in the real world. It happens in the abstract universe of set theory and infinite precision. Here's how it breaks reality the pieces in the paradox are not normal slices. They're infinitely complex, non-measurable sets. They can't be assigned a volume at all. They don't exist in the physical world. But in pure math, they do. And with the axiom of choice, a controversial rule in set theory, you're allowed to pick elements from infinite sets in ways that feel impossible. And suddenly, you can duplicate matter, not metaphorically, literally, at least in theory. It's not a trick. It's a feature of how math doesn't always care about what's physically possible. So what does that mean? That deep inside the logic of space, there's a glitch, a loophole, a quiet whisper, that says the laws of volume and shape can be broken if you're willing to leave the world behind. Because math is not reality. It's a mirror. And sometimes the reflection doesn't match. And that is the Banach-Tarski paradox.